Hi everyone, I'm Dr. Lindsay Tuba. And I'm Dr. JJ Wicker. We are from Little Heroes Pediatric Hearing Clinic. And today, our coffee talk is going to delve a little bit deeper into something we've already talked about, which is audiograms and the fact that they aren't everything. But before we delve into this topic, please like and subscribe to our channel and click that notification bell so that when we come out with new content, you will know about it and you can share it with your friends. Kick us off, what did we talk about before and why are we talking about it again? Yeah, well kind of before we talked about um, disorders that can happen with normal hearing, but we wanted to bring this up again because so often there have been times in my career when I've had somebody come to see me for a second opinion um, or after time has passed when they've seen an audiologist and said something's just not right. Um, they get a hearing test, the audiogram, which is the graph that we plot the, your hearing thresholds on. Um, they'll say the audiologist or the hearing aid dispenser, whoever did the hearing test said that my hearing's normal, there was nothing more that could be done. And that just drives me absolutely crazy. And so um, we wanted to talk about it today because it's something that comes up so often where people come in and they say, we were told nothing could be done or we were told everything was normal. But the issue here is that the audiogram, the graph that we use to plot hearing thresholds, doesn't really give us a picture, a full picture, of what the auditory processing centers in our brain are doing, whether we're talking about true auditory processing disorder, um, tinnitus, ringing in the ears, you can have that with or without a hearing loss. And the, so the audiogram could be completely normal and many people unfortunately hear, you know, there's no cure, there's nothing that can be done, or they see someone who just aren't current on what is available. Um, and so they get sent away from that provider's office and too often don't seek a second opinion or somebody who specializes in those things. And so we really wanted to do a video on the fact that if you've seen someone for any issue, and even if it's just something's not right with my child or with myself, and I've done, I had a full audiogram, um, every, they said everything was normal or they said there was nothing else they could do, that's crap. <laughs> and it, it is. And, um, and what I'd like to do is kind of talk about even more at a, you know, anatomical, scientific level why that's true. Because um, the audiogram is only testing what's we, what we call the peripheral hearing, which just means the way your ears are functioning in terms of how the sounds are coming through the ears and making their way to the brain. The audiogram does absolutely nothing. Um, it tests absolutely nothing about how the brain will then handle those sounds or, or interpret those sounds. And uh, there's a really famous quote out there, and I, I don't know where it started. It's kind of a cliche now in audiology, but we hear with the brain, not with the ears. Our ears are just a tool that gets sounds to the brain, um, yet the audiogram only tests the ears. And that's why it can be so misleading because it makes perfect sense to me um, and in medicine everywhere that there can be issues with how the brain is handling incoming stimuli. And there are, of course, other differences and disorders related to the brain not doing its job, even though peripherally your limbs or your eyes or what have you are, are doing their job. Um, so it's, uh, to me, it just makes no sense that you would stop at the audiogram when there's a persistent concern. Um, you know, we do talk about the audiogram being the gold standard of hearing, of testing hearing, but what I wish people would start clarifying is that the audiogram is the gold standard for testing peripheral hearing sensitivity yeah. and not the gold standard for testing anything else related to the ears and hearing. Yeah, and just to be clear, we're not saying that an audiogram is worthless or that oh, it shouldn't be not. done. It definitely, it, even if you feel like you have normal hearing and you're coming to an audiologist for tinnitus, for example, um, an audiogram absolutely still needs to be done. A thorough diagnostic um, test audiogram needs to be completed, but that is not where things need to end right. if that doesn't explain, excuse me, the problem that you're having. Right, yeah, absolutely, because of course, if we're talking about auditory processing disorders or sound sensitivity disorders, we do first want to understand, are these concerning listening behaviors that you're seeing, are they caused by 
a peripheral hearing loss. So right. it, it does make sense to do it. But like Dr. Tuba says, it doesn't make sense to stop there. Um, and similar, I've had similar experiences where um, I work mostly with children who have auditory processing disorders. And um, I can't tell you the number. I would, I would be willing to bet it's all, every single one of my patients who comes in come in and say that they've been tested before by audiology and told over and over again that nothing is wrong, um, but the parents just notice that their child is struggling to listen and understand what is being said. Um, and so they're kind of given the ring around in terms of, well, what, what else can I do? What's next? Like, there's something different. I can't, I don't know what it is, but I know that something's different and so they finally are able to come and get an, an auditory processing evaluation and they get all sorts of answers from that um, especially when it comes to speech discrimination and speech noise like those are the other things that just give us a lot more information about how the brain is using the sounds that are coming in yeah and one thing I want to point out is audiology as a profession is really broad. There are a lot of different specialties that audiologists can go into. And so this isn't necessarily to throw anyone under the bus. I know when I first started my career, I wasn't somebody who specialized in tinnitus. And I remember working, I worked with adults in the beginning and I remember somebody coming in um, an adult who was really struggling with tinnitus, but I just didn't have the skill set to really address it. Um, and so he had normal hearing, and I had to refer him off to a university. I was in the Midwest at the time because I didn't have the skill set to address it. Um, what can happen sometimes is the audiologists say, there's nothing I can do about this. Hopefully they give you a referral to you know, whatever specialist that you need because these are specialty areas. If you have a normal audiogram but something else going on, not every audiologist is gonna work with that. So that is the time to speak up and say, can you refer me to someone who specializes in you know, auditory processing disorder? This is, my, this is what's going on. Even though I have a normal audiogram and you have no idea what to do, where can I go to get help? And that's really what Dr. Wicker and I are trying to do with these videos is spread awareness that not every audiologist or hearing aid dispenser um, is gonna even really know what they don't know. Right. I mean, most will and, and be able to, to refer off, but mm -hmm. we really want you as the consumer, as the parent, um, or as the patient to know that there are other resources out there, if you have a normal audiogram, if you've had your hearing tested, if you've been told that there's nothing that can be done for these things um, that are auditory related, that's just not true. There are so many things that can be done for, a, for most of these things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, and you know, I do think that there is an element of people um, just not, um, kind of working with what's ingrained in them. Because I know myself, I uh, for, for treating auditory processing disorders, one of the things you know that I um, will use a lot, especially for children who have speech and noise deficits, are the low gain hearing aids. Mm -hmm. um, and I struggled internally for a long time coming to the decision to try using those um, because I felt like it was kind of ingrained in me from my schooling that hearing aids are for hearing loss and why would you fit them otherwise? Um, but it just, more and more didn't make sense to me that we would stop there because again um, it's not just about getting sounds to the brain it's helping the brain know how to filter out noise know how to recognize that speech is what's important and so that's how i came to the decision but to, to to use that type of intervention but this is all to say that sometimes things are kind of ingrained in you that you do mm -hmm. x y and z for a b and c and you don't really think outside of the box in that mm -hmm. way and i think that's kind of what audiograms have become they've become the box for audiology yeah. um, and sometimes people don't know that they can step outside that and think about other things that could be occurring yeah, and I will put this plug in. This is very specific to tinnitus, one of my specialties. Um, the other thing is you may see an audiologist uh, who says, oh yeah, I know all about tinnitus and I'm gonna fit you with this hearing aid. Even, you know, even if you have normal hearing loss, you can use t 
tinnitus maskers through the technology of a hearing aid. Um, and that only helps about 60% of people with tinnitus. And so even though they say, oh yeah, I know what to do, that doesn't necessarily mean that they specialize in tinnitus if you're somebody who is suffering from tinnitus who doesn't get the help you need from that. So again, that's where really seeking out a specialist who has more of a um, broad knowledge range of, of treatments that are available and effective where that can really benefit you as well. So that's another thing that um, I've seen in you know the tinnitus world is you'll see a lot of people who dispense hearing aids say oh yeah we can treat tinnitus and they probably can um, especially if they're using a tinnitus masker with understanding that if that doesn't work for you that's okay there's a lot of other things that can that can help but that audiologist may not know about those things if that's not one of their specialties yeah so 100 percent. so Moral of the story is, I feel like we kind of... <laughs> we kind of did go off on a few tangents there. And, but, but that's okay. But the moral of the story is, um, if you go to an audiologist with concerns for hearing, um, and you're told that your hearing is normal, but you still have those concerns, don't stop there. Um, look around for an audiologist who is willing to do additional testing um, to look at what's happening on a more central level. Yeah, so. and we definitely talked about, touched on a lot of different topics in this video. So... Please engage, please comment below with any of your questions and we will get back with you. We'll leave a link to our website and our email addresses. You can always reach out to us. Um, even if we're not in your area, even if we can't treat you directly, we are happy to offer our opinions and our recommendations. So we will see you soon. Bye.